Shalom. I think all of us are aware that when we're reading the Gospels, there's a number of times that he says that he is something. He would say, I am the good shepherd. Or another picture that's related to that is, I'm the door of the sheep. And one that we're very familiar with is when Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. So let's take a look at this at another huge example. Really is in Matthew 21, 20 through through 45, where Jesus is talking about the fact that he is the stone rejected and he's become the chief cornerstone. Now, when we read the Hebrew, we're looking at ha Evan rosh pina. The Hebrew means the chief stone of the turning. Now, in previous lessons, we studied how the Bible indicates that Jesus is the cornerstone, the first stone. But we also realize that Bible historians suggest that based upon the Hebrew, that this could actually be the place or the chief stone of the turning, and it could be a keystone of an arch, the last stone of the arch, as it holds it all together. Both sides of the arch now rest on that keystone. Let us again see how the Bible shows that he is also the last, the keystone of an arch. Let's see how this picture today helps us grasp Jesus and the good news of the kingdom. So let me take you to the area of northeast Turkey, to a very famous mountain range. We know it as Mount Ararat. It is really a range of two mountains. You can see them here, Greater Ararat and the Little Ararat. But we know that after the flood, the ark finally rested here someplace on this highland. And so indeed, we know that sin entered the world for the human race in the garden. It continued and Adonai became extremely sad so that he was going to get rid of all humankind. Now, before the flood, there's an amazing verse, Genesis 6, 5, where God says, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was over, only evil continually. But amazingly, there's an explosive verse after the flood, Genesis 8:21. And right there in this verse, it says, for the intent of man's heart is evil from his youth. You can read it. That's Noah and his family. They're in the same state as all mankind before the flood. The flood did nothing. The flood changed nothing. Sin continued. We see this in Psalm 4. There's no one who does good. Paul even talks about this in Romans 3, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Rabbi Akiva, the great Torah scholar, Maimonides, the great Torah scholar of Judaism in the late 12th century, and the writer of Hebrews all agree that it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins, meaning intentional sin. There's no ritual, no sacrifice, nothing that works. Yom Kippur doesn't work. Torah is incomplete. It's missing something. God's job on the Torah is not finished. Mankind is in deep trouble. It's almost as if you can say the books of Moses, the Torah, is like a picture of an arch with no keystone, that it's incomplete. There's no forgiveness for intentional sin. The arch needs the last stone. The arch needs the keystone. And Paul talks about this in Romans 10, 4. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Now, the Greek word there for end is telos. Better is the goal or the final result. Nomos, in this context, is probably better for the word, not the law, but Torah, God's instruction. So a different way of reading the verse is for Messiah, Christ, is the goal or the purpose of the final reserve of Torah, God's instruction. Paul kind of addresses this again in Acts 13, 39. I paraphrase it and says, what the Torah can't do, Jesus did. Jesus, the Messiah. He's got to be the missing stone. He's the keystone of the arch. Jesus, the last stone. And everything is now complete based upon the cross. He completed it and he said, it is finished. What the Torah could not do is now complete in the Lord. He is truly the last, like the keystone of an arch. He finished the Torah. 
the missing piece of the Torah is now there. And it took the living word to complete the written word. We ask ourselves the question again, how can Jesus be the first? And how can he be the last simultaneously as we come into episode 10? I'll see you then. Shalom.